Greetings and welcome to the Transform Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Anastasio. Today is Friday, February 18th, 2022, and this is episode 37. So um, this is our second episode we've published this week. If you guys uh, go back a couple days to episode 36, uh, you'll see that we published an episode about uh, TikTok tactics, uh, very specific, very low-level, granular episode about how to use the TikTok algorithm more effectively uh, to get wider distribution uh, uh, and, and to, a, to a broader, wider audience, I guess you could say. Uh, so if you're using TikTok, if you're thinking about using TikTok, if you're on the fence about TikTok, that's a great episode for you guys to check out. I would definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, today's episode is going to go in a little bit different direction. Um, today, I want to talk to you guys about the way we see something I'd like to call, uh, a term that I've coined, uh, quote, philosophical assets, unquote. Okay, and you're going to be probably saying, what the heck is that, Chris? Uh, you know, looking forward to finding out what that is. Um, so before I explain exactly what I mean by that, you know, your business is is a representation of you in many ways like there's you know as a small business owner you know maybe now medium business owner when you started that business um or when the people who did start that business created it there's there's an infusion of your your personality your view of the world your passions your motivation it's all kind of coalesced into a manifestation of your business now, if if it, if it wasn't if it wasn't the case, if if you know somebody started a business and it was just a you know money grab or you know you know it, it didn't have any of their uh, philosophy their their outlook on on you know that particular uh, service business or product line or whatever if if none of that made it in there, it's not likely that business is still around and I'm not. I'm not trying to condemn it. I'm not trying to say it's impossible to succeed that way. But what I'm saying is if you if you have aspirations, and of course if you're listening to this podcast, it means you're still you're still around, so you don't fall into that category. But if you have aspirations of building a business that's sustainable over the long term, like really truly um, you know, lasts many many, you know, years, decades, whatever, uh, you know, truly transcends that 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 dividing line from being a business to becoming a brand, if that's your aspiration and that's your goal, then I really think today's episode is critical to that. And it's and it's likely that you've already done some of what's in this episode or that you're, you know, if you're in your infancy, that maybe if you haven't done it, you would definitely see the value of doing it. And I think, you know, again, at the very, very top level, what I'm going to be talking about today is just this this way that you that you sort of wrap together um, the you know the the um, the way you see your business, the way you you, you uh, foresee its role in the marketplace and society, things of that nature, and it's it's kind of collectively um, an amalgam of your philosophy on why you started that business, why it exists, why customers should care it exists why customers should take notice that it exists and bring their business to it, you know, bring their patronage to it, right? So I think getting this right is both difficult and easy, right? It's, di- it's, it's easy because it should come from within. It should be something you're, you're kind of already got inside of you that compelled you to start your business and, and to put yourself out there. But on the flip side, it's difficult because oftentimes we're so close to this kind of thing it can be very hard to articulate it, right? It's like it's in our head, it's in our heart, but it's hard to get it out on paper. It's hard to put it out to the world and, and kind of say it exactly the way that we envision it and feel it and know it inside of ourselves, okay? So just keep all that in mind, guys. just kind of want to set the table on that before I get into exactly what I mean when I say philosophical assets. Now, let's, let's break that term down real quick. First of all, the reason I use the word asset is because in digital marketing, you know, that's, that's a term we often use for other types of things that are useful to you in your digital marketing efforts. So an asset might be you have a great Facebook business page. An asset might be you have an awesome logo. An asset might be 
uh, that you have, you know, a hundred original thought piece blog articles waiting in the wings to be published to society. You know, anything that you can use to expand and build and, and uh, promulgate, you know, uh, into a digital footprint uh, to, to, to gain attention, to develop business, to connect with customers, all those things are assets of some sort. So that's why I kind of use that general term because it's something that's going to serve your business and, and give you a, a, a measure of a return on investment in your business as you use it, okay? So that's what I mean by asset. The philosophical part um, is, is, you know, again, kind of, you know, from, from my standpoint, it's my way of, of, of kind of wrapping together the, these, these items that I'm about to talk to you about and, and it's collectively referring to them as a, a philosophical set of assets, okay? So what are philosophical assets specifically? Well, they are your company's vision, your company's mission, your company's values, your company's um, uh, logo or sort of branding, okay, you know, visually speaking, your company's tagline, and your company's slogans that you may be using for specific products and services. So, you know, those are the specific items that I'm referring to when I say philosophical assets. Now, a lot of you guys have... have seen this stuff before. This is, there's nothing new about any of this. This isn't, this isn't groundbreaking stuff. This isn't going to like make your eyes pop out of your head. I mean, this is stuff you've, you maybe you've already got it. Maybe you already considered it. You've already heard people say you needed it, but I wanted to kind of wrap it together in this episode. And we're not going to, we're not going to spend this episode specifically figuring out how to develop every single one of these. I think you're definitely going to hear material from us that, that isolates each one of them, that we'll talk about each one of them, that will kind of maybe walk you through uh, tactics and, and methods you can use uh, to, you know, to, to, uh, to develop these things. But what I think we want to accomplish in this episode is just kind of conveying to you the importance of, you know, first of all, what are these things and why are they important? Okay, I think that's what, you know, what we want to take away to be from today's episode, okay? So, so a lot of people, I think, when they see these things, you know, vision, mission, value, it, it, it kind of comes across as, you know, a, a pointless exercise. It's like, look, I know what the company's vision is, or I know what its mission is. I understand the values that go behind it. If I understand them and I communicate them to my employees, is it really necessary to articulate them formally, you know, on our website, in our, in our marketing materials, in our, in our advertising? And I'm not saying everybody feels that way who's listening to this. I mean, there's, there's a, probably a good measure of you who already have these things, already have communicated these things, already have put these things out there, and that's great. And then I think there's going to be a segment of this audience on this podcast who, you know, falls into this other category where you either don't have this stuff yet or you're skeptical of why you need to... Uh, advertise it to the world, okay, so to speak, right? And that's more so where I think a lot of this is, is, is geared towards is making you understand the value of putting this stuff out there, right? So I think, let's just kind of go through what each one of these things is uh, in case it's a little fuzzy. I know for the longest time for me, I, I, I could not have defined the difference between vision and mission. They, they just blended together for me. So this is you know, this is cathartic for me, too, as I kind of lay this out for you guys. Um, and I think after we go through what each one of these things is, uh, we can talk in a more macro sense about why they're important to communicate them uh, to your potential audience, to your current customer base, and that sort of thing, okay? And maybe we'll dabble a little bit in, in how you might, you know, develop a couple of these things or, or think about developing some of these things. But, but, I, I, but I really do believe that any one of them can become an entire episode. <laughs> we could we could spend another ten to twenty minute episode on on uh, conjuring you know into into the proper wording, proper representation. You know, let's say your vision for your company or or the or the tagline that your company should be branding itself with and that sort of thing. Okay, so we definitely will save that for future uh, episodes. So let's go through what each one of these things is. So so the difference between mission and vision. Okay, and and you know, there's a lot of different ways you can describe. There's a lot of different ways you can, um, I think, say what these things are. But 
uh, prior to this episode, I, I kind of hunted around a little bit and wanted to find some of the better ones. So this is like very clearly communicated to you guys. So, so in distinguishing a mission and a vision, mission statement d- defined, quoting here from uh, one of the websites that I looked at, mission statement defines the company's business, its objectives, and its approach to reach those objectives. Okay, so again, the company's business its objectives, and its approach to reach those objectives. A vision statement describes the desired future position of the company. So elements of mission and vision are often combined to provide a statement of the company's purposes, goals, and values. And I think that's a little bit extraneous, but you know that's, that's a possibility, but you could, you could look at it that way. Okay, so you know another way that, that, that I've read it described is that the vision statement describes to where the company or organization hopes they will be going in the future if they can fulfill their mission. Okay, so you see how the two interlock and combine, right? Your mission is a little bit more down, let's say if you were in the military, you'd recognize these terms, but you're, you're a little bit more down on the operational level, whereas the vision, you're a little bit more at the strategic level, right? But but one flows to the other. One facilitates the next, right? So your mission statement, um, you know, as it describes your company's business and your objectives, you know, let's just take, you know, we use a lot of financial um, examples on this podcast, you know, taxes, financial planning, things like that. So we'll just kind of continue to go with that. But this could apply, obviously, to anybody. Uh, You can just work the template into your uh, business. But let's say you, you had a CPA accounting firm. Right. You know, your mission might be something like the mission of XYZ CPA accounting firm is to deliver, you know, world class um, tax preparation and planning services in order to uh, improve the financial position of our clients so that they have more uh, income to enjoy and you know, legally pay less tax. Okay, so I just did that one on the fly there. I mean, whether whether it's perfect or not is a different story, but you, you kind of get the sense of it's very descriptive. It has some specifics in it as to like what the company does, what it's trying to achieve, its, it's approach to it. It's talking about tax preparation. It's talking about, you know, uh, tax planning. And the outcome is to, you know, improve the financial position of the client. Then not just to come in and just complete a tax return, but there's sort of a of an elevation or an escalation of status by the time they're finished with, with that person's tax return, right? So that might be, you know, pretty close to a, a good mission statement for that firm, right? But the vision, assuming they do that, right? So they carry out that mission and they carry it out to a T. So the vision would be something, and again, coming up with this real time, but the vision might be something like the vision of XYZ CPA firm is to be the number one regional tax preparation firm on, you know, the West Coast, you know, the United States, you know, just the implication there. Um, You know, something, and that's a pretty broad one. It's pretty, probably generic one too. But what, what you can see from it is its difference to the mission. Number one, it's, it's very different from the mission. And it has a future-based implication to it, right? Because right now, the implication is that firm is not number one. It's not the number one recognized. It's not the number one you know, branded CPA firm on the West Coast. Uh, so it's, it's saying it wants to get there, that its vision is to become that, right? Or, you know, become synonymous with tax preparation and planning on the West Coast, you know? Obviously, you'd have to toy with the with the words. You'd have to come up with, you know, whatever fit your business. But in this example, you can see the contrast between a mission, which definitely gives you a sense of how and what the business is carrying out from, a, let's say, a day-to-day or, you know, week-to-week standpoint versus where it's trying to end up, you know, sort of in the consciousness of its of its audience, its client base, its prospects. It's trying to end up in this future position that you would describe as, the number one, you know, tax planning firm on the West Coast, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's your vision and your mission. All right, let's go over to uh, uh, values. Okay, so company values are, 
you know, sort of, you know, adjectival characteristics that you want your business to stand for, that you want your business to uh, infuse into its daily operations, let's say. These are things that, you know, above all else, you want your business, your employees, you know, your customer service people to embody these values, right? Now, when you choose your company values or you put your company values out there, by choosing some of them, it doesn't mean you don't mean any of the other ones that you could have chosen, right? Like, like if you have, let's say, two or three of them and one of them isn't integrity, it doesn't mean that your company is dishonest, right? So, so don't, you know, because if you think of it that way, you're going to pick a hundred company values, right? And it's just going to be completely useless. What you're really trying to say here is that there's, there's, you know, one or two or three or four, whatever the number is, but I, I don't think it should be too many, um, you know, of, of these types of characteristics or values that you value so much that, that, that you have ingrained into the culture of your company so much so that you need you you just have a, a a burning desire to slap them on your company's website. You know that you that you want to put them out there so publicly that people cannot mistake the fact that your company stands for those things. Okay, and so you know obviously you want to be thoughtful about this because yes, if you mention a few of them and you haven't mentioned others, that could be noticeable, right? So this is a very kind of fine balancing act that you have to do, I think, with this. But, you know, just some examples like, you know, loyalty, uh, trust, uh, accountability, simplicity, respect, empathy, um, you know, um, you know, I, I mean, if you said something like customer first, you know, that might not even be considered technically a value. Um, but, but you get the point. Like, like the values that I just rattled off, you know, take loyalty, for example. You know, when you come out and say that your one of your company's values is loyalty, you are kind of blaring from the mountaintops like, hey, you know, you can expect that this company always operates with that in mind. We are loyal to whom? We are loyal to our customers. We are loyal to our employees. We are loyal to other businesses we do, we do business with, right? And just kind of saying it out loud and adopting it and kind of leaning into it there's something about that that I think it takes on a new power, right? Because because you're 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 kind of like holding yourself accountable to it. Like you're coming out and saying like this is something that if you interact with our business, you are going to see this in our business. You know, in, in all of you know, in all of the transactions that that customer has with that business, and now they're kind of like on the alert, you know, that if you don't hold to that value. Well, you you didn't you did not uphold your covenant to that customer or to that prospect, right? So you're, you're you're giving yourself kind of a report card to be measured against. You know, did we treat you with respect? Did we treat you with empathy? Were we loyal in all our dealings with you? You know, things like that. You're basically saying, you know, you can expect this from us, and if you don't get this from us, you can call us out on this. Okay. So, you know, so I think that's how, um, you know, th these values are supposed to operate, you know, from the standpoint of your, your prospect, your customer, you, the way they view your business and how you can leverage these things, you know, these specific values to say, here's who we are and here's what to expect from us. And let's face it, when you, when you say that and you do it, it's even more powerful, right? Because now you're building trust. The prospect, the client, whomever, they're saying, well, they, they said these were their core values and like I really got that sense from them in the transaction I did with them or in the business that I did with them. That they really did follow along with those values and they, they upheld them. And that alone can become an extremely powerful um, mechanism to build, you know, that trust factor with your business. You know, go back to episodes 31 to 33, no like and trust, Right. So upholding and living your company values is a great way to build on that no like trust uh, sequence, you know, that you have to traverse uh, with every new person who comes along to your business. Okay, so that was company values. 
So now let's talk about uh, slogan and tagline. Okay. So th this is this is something that I think a lot of people um, would actually mix up. That, that that they might think a slogan is a tagline, and a tagline is a slogan. But let's disabuse that right now here on this podcast. A tagline is something that embodies. It's a phrase. It's a collection of words. It's a sentence. It's it's usually very brief. Okay, let me let me be clear about that. That captures your business's reason for existence. Like it's 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 almost in a way an embodiment of all these other things we're talking about. Okay, or or a top line way to kind of catch somebody's attention about your business so that they pay attention to these other things that we're talking about. You'll see what I mean when I go through a couple examples here in a moment. So the tagline kind of wraps together and kind of brings together all this stuff about your business and, sh and sort of like shoots it out in one quick catchy phrase or sentence, right? And it's, and it's often very permanent. You know, you don't change taglines every six months, right? The tagline is the tagline for that company. Again, when I read you some of these examples, particularly for listeners here in the States, they'll, they'll automatically recognize these things and know exactly which companies I'm talking about. Um, but, the, but a slogan is, is a bit more tailorable because it's something that you use for specific products, specific, um, uh, specific um, you know, services that you're offering. It, it, you know, it, it, could be, it could be just something that's, that's on like a limited basis, like, hey, we're offering you know, some service for a limited amount of time and we have a slogan that, that we use in the advertising campaign for that, you know, uh, for that, um, uh, for that particular product line or that particular offering, right? So the slogan is the, is the, is the temporary one. The tagline is the permanent one. It's not to say you'd never change your tagline, but if you're changing it too often, it probably was never a good tagline to begin with. And you're probably thinking of taglines incorrectly. Let's put it that way. Okay, so 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 you definitely want to, you know, if you're finding yourself, like, hey, you got a new tagline for the company, you know, every eight months, you know, you probably need to brush up on the definition of tagline. Okay, so let me give you guys just a couple of examples of a tagline. I'm not going to necessarily go through slogans because there's so many of them uh, that, that could be cited. But but let's just talk about uh, t taglines for a second. So take, for example, Nike. Okay, everybody knows what Nike's tagline is. Just do it. Okay, <laughs> now. Notice that in those three words, there's no mention of shoes, there's no mention of sneakers, there's no mention of athletics, there's actually really no mention of anything. Right? It's just a collection of words that got associated, that got fused to everything else about the company. It's products, it's sneakers, it's commercials, it's advertising, Michael Jordan, you know, everything else the company was putting out there and then branding over the top of it, just do it, it's now so fused together that it would be nearly impossible to find somebody, especially, you know, like I said, here in the United States, who you would say, which company has the just do it tagline, and they wouldn't know what you were talking about. I mean, it'd be nearly impossible to find uh, somebody who would, who would say that. Okay, so that's a big one. Uh, another um, common one, I, I think for a long time these commercials ran on TV, uh, though I haven't really seen them uh, for a while now, but De Beers, the diamond company, their tagline, a diamond is forever. Okay, very powerful tagline. You know, a lot of implication to that, a lot of implication to the value of a diamond, the symbolic significance when you give it to your significant other and ask them, let's say, to marry you. You know, that's the forever part. So this was a perfect one for De Beers. I, I don't think they could have come up with anything better than that. So a diamond is forever. Um... You know, another interesting one, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of them that are, that are probably very recognizable to you guys. You know, BMW, the ultimate driving machine, Allstate Insurance Company, you're in good hands. You know, th these are just, you know, catchy, long-lasting taglines that have really become very closely associated with these, with these companies, with these brands. Okay, so that's a tagline, and that's something you really ought to put... A significant amount of thought into like if you don't feel like you have or if you definitely don't have a tagline for your business this is something you really want to spend some time working on and when I say spend some time obviously you don't want to take six years to come up with it I mean the sooner you can come up with it the sooner you can use it 
but at the same time, you don't want to rush it because it's supposed to be permanent. It's supposed to be something that you really rely on um, to, to, like I said, to fuse your actual business and your branding with an image that comes to mind for the consumer. Okay, so, so you're really trying to do that, and so you need something that, that can accomplish that, right? So that's on the tagline side. So slogans, I mean, again, I'm not going to uh, you know, hunt around and give you a bunch of different uh, slogans, um, you know, from different products and stuff. You can, you can actually go out there and accomplish that research very easily on your own. If you look up certain product lines, you can look up the advertising for that specific product. And, you know, who knows? Maybe sometimes you're not even going to find a recognizable slogan for that product. That may be just kind of a miss in terms of the company, you know, not even creating one for that product. Um, you know, and, that, and that's, it's possible. I think, I think you're going to see some advertising where maybe it's kind of like, hey, we don't even need a slogan for this product. It's so desirable or it's so common or it's so obvious. But I think in a lot of cases you will see it. Okay. And so it's inter- it, it would be an interesting exercise for you to kind of practice looking at like, okay, how did, how did that specific product, like that Apple iPhone model, how did they, what slogan did they put to it? You know, what, you know, what, what, what were they trying to capture when they came up with that slogan? Okay, but, but just start thinking reflexively about slogans and how important they can be to communicating something about a product, okay? You know, or a service, like I said. So, that, you know, and then I think the last part, I think at the beginning I mentioned to you, you know, your logo, your visual logo was another one of your philosophical assets. I think, you know, that's maybe debatable a little bit. I mean, a logo is pure visuals, it's pure graphics. And so you, you might argue, well, it's not really, there's no philosophy in it. It's more of just, you know, what looks pleasing, what looks appropriate. So that one's a little bit more debatable. We actually have an entire episode. I think it was one of our first few episodes, like episode two or three or four, uh, where we talked about logos and it was like kind of logos 101. Like, you know, there's lots of different types of logos, lots of different, um, you know, color schemes and, and graphical representations that you can use. And actually, I would encourage you, if you don't have a logo, and you're trying to work on that, and you're trying to brand that, I would say go back and listen to that episode. That, that's actually going to get you further than anything I'm going to say in this episode. But what I will say here is that doing all these other things, you know, coming up with the vision and the mission and the values and the, the, uh, the tagline and whatnot, and then either not having a logo or just putting sort of a lackluster amount of attention to your logo is, is kind of a swing and a miss, I think, in, in, in just my opinion. I think, I think if you're going to put all this thought into these other items, then coming up with a, with a thoughtful, uh, you, know, um, you know, kind of a sensible, matching, associative logo is a, is a great idea. So just kind of make sure that's part of uh, the, whole, um, you know, the whole suite of phil- philosophical assets that you have because they're going to often appear together. You know, that logo that visual branding is going to appear with these other items, okay? So I think, you know, just finish out, guys, I think, you know, the, the whole thing here is, and again, I, 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 you know, we spent most of this episode just talking about what these things are, and I think that was the most important thing because I think baselining that and helping you understand that has a lot of value in and of itself. But I think the issue is, you know, why is it so important? Like, why do I need these things? And I think we'll kind of use the end of this podcast as, let's say, a lead-in to future podcasts where we go through how you can develop these things. But I think at the very, very macro high level, I think what's, what's so important about these things is that when you are advertising and marketing your company, the, if, if you don't have these things, it's almost like a, a, a boat that's not tied down in the harbor, right? It's just kind of floating out on the water, you know, maybe it's carried out to sea. It's completely unmoored from, from its safe location, right? As opposed to a boat that, you know, comes into harbor, goes up to the slip, it ties itself down, and it's sort of anchored there, um, and, 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 it's, and it's situated in, in its proper position, right? And I think, you know, when you think about your marketing, if you don't have any of these things that I described, then you basically don't have, you know, you don't have that positioning. You don't have that anchoring going on for all your other marketing and advertising that goes on, right? So once you get these things in place, you can really start building on them. You can build advertising campaigns. You can build themes into those campaigns. You can, you can lace this stuff into your material in a way that, you know, captures the brand and captures the company's, you know, vision, mission, etc. 
and communicates that effectively. So that's really what the value of all this stuff I think becomes is it's a launching point, it's a foundation for you to develop other material, other um, you know, other marketing efforts, things of that nature. Okay, so if you don't do it, I think it's just going to catch up to you at some point. If you do do it, it's going to have a cumulative, you know, sort of um, a multiplicative effect over time because your your marketing and your advertising it'll be so consistent with those values and those um, you know those um, those mission statements, the vision, et cetera. It'll it'll kind of come together and it will show up in everything that you do and say. Uh, about your company. Okay, so we'll talk more about that on future episodes, uh, but just kind of wanted to leave that out there. Something to think about, uh, a reason for you to think about why you should develop uh, these, like like I said, philosophical assets for your business. So um, as always, you know, definitely appreciate you guys uh, listening to this podcast, liking it, subscribing to it, sharing it. Uh, we definitely appreciate that. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and uh, at our website, Princeform.com, you can contact us through any of those uh, through any of those means. Leave us a comment, a question. If this is something you want to work on together, we'd definitely be happy to do that with you. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll be back next week with episodes uh, 38 and 39. Uh, looking forward to that. And again, thank you guys for uh, listening to the podcast and checking in with us. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>